seventh month, the month of July. What do we do? We give thanks all the way. Psalm 145 verse 1 says, My heart explodes with praise to you now and forever. My heart bows in worship to you, my King and my God. Let's start with prayer. Father, we thank you for lifting us in January, February, March, April, May, June, and now July. Our heart explodes in praise to you, God. We have come to bow our hearts in worship. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ears. Praise the Lord Siraco! Now let's praise. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise ye. Every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God. 
That was explosive. Really, really explosive. But wait, we're not done yet. Next is wonderful worship because Jesus is worthy.
wanting, not forsaking. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. just love you, Lord God. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for keeping your promise to us. Thank you for pastor and our church family. Teach our hearts to obey your voice as we look into your word of truth today. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah! Our God reigns forever and ever. Hello, influencers for Christ. How are you today? I'm sure you're all excited and guess what? It's actually Thanksgiving Sunday. Wow. Praise God. It's the second half of the year, which means that we have spent half of the year alive and well, despite all that's been happening. And now we're moving into another half. And you know that we have 12 months in a year, so it's six months already gone. So it's six of our 12 left. Wow. We thank God for that. Aren't you grateful? Well, if you were not grateful before, now is the reason to just say, thank you, God. I'm so grateful for keeping me alive, for keeping my parents alive, for keeping my dad, my, my sister, my brother, and everyone that I love and care about, my friends, and everyone that I care about. Just say thank you to God. Yes. It's always, always, always necessary to show gratitude to God. Remember, gratitude God expects us to show gratitude every time. Remember, we've learned that in one of our teachings. So yes, as always, we're going to be learning at the feet of God. But before we do that, I would like to ask you, do you have your five items? It's very important. Remember, your five items, they go a long way in helping you gain the knowledge that God wants you to gain today. And what are they? Your Bible, your, yes, you guessed right, your Fresh Fire devotional, what else, what else? Your notebook, good job, and then your pen or your pencil and your offering. Why offering? Because it's a privilege to give to God out of the much that he has blessed you and your parents and your loved ones with. Giving to God is not because God is hungry or begging you. Giving to God just shows gratitude and honor. That you remember that nothing that you have and will ever have is by your power. All right. So last week, we learned the topic, love obeys. Hmm. I love that topic. Of course, every other topic we, we treat here is an absolute must love. Yes. But this one, you know, is especially an interesting one. And of course, as the topic points out to the memory verse also emphasized the whole concept of obeying because we love God and it's you know stated it very clearly in the book of John chapter 14 verse 23 to 24 and as we were taught 
we must always remember that love is important. And because love is important and because we love God and we show it around us, we must always remember that rather than sacrifice, obedience is better. And we must obey God as a result of that. Okay? And also we were reminded that when we love God, it must show by our love of others. And when we claim to obey God, it must show in the obedience of those who are godly authorities above us. And of course, we know our parents, our teachers, our elders, as long as they are leading us in the way of God, they are telling us things that will benefit us as God desires from us, we must obey them because that is a way to show that we love God. All right. And of course, we remember that we were told that if we cannot obey or love the people we can see with our eyes, how can we say we love and obey the God we cannot see? Do we see how interesting the equation is? Cannot love the people we can see or obey them? Cannot equal, equate or cannot be equals to loving God that we cannot see? All right, so moving on. So many interesting points from last week's teaching. We also learned, interestingly, that God also, when we say we love God, oh, Father, I love you, I love you, he tests us so that we can truly show that we love him and we obey him. As seen in the book of Matthew, chapter 25, from verse 35 to 40, when Jesus said, as you fed these ones, you fed me. And people, and they were like, ah, Lord, when did, you, when did we feed you? When did we clothe you? So go on and read that Bible verse again to remind yourself. We'll, when you say you love and obey God, you will truly be tested. And, and it will show by your actions. Basically, all in all, the way we treat other people, we see, translates to how we treat God. That's, you know, a powerful um, part of last week's teaching. And if we can love and obey the people we can see. So this is the opposite now. If you cannot love and obey the people we can, you can see, you can't say that you're loving and you're obedient to God. So therefore, if you can just love and obey the people you can see with your eyes, you are showing love and obedience to God who you cannot see. Finally, we learned last week the benefits of obedience and we you know there's so many benefits we learned like about seven but amongst them we learned that one benefit of obedience is that it's an act of worship and as god's own children we must in everything declare worship in everything we do of course also obedience is a proof of love obedience has the benefits of blessings of holy living and there's so many others and if you want to refresh your memory go back to your notebooks or go back to the to the video on youtube then we learned finally on the benefits of loving god and people and there's so many benefits of loving god and people we learned that good things will be our portion both spiritually and physically we begin to see easily more revelations about god and of course when we have more revelations about god does that not help us in our faith life because we know that without faith, we cannot please God. And so an easy equation to building more revelation about God will be to show love to God, also to show love to people that are around us. All right, dear influencers, I'm sure I have been able to refresh your memory on your amazing teaching from last week. So this week, we are moving on to a very, 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 you know, I told you that um, the teachings are always a must love. And of course, so today's own is another must love. And the topic is the proof. Mm, interesting. Proof. What does proof mean? I'm sure some of you can tell me, but I'll just jump into it. Proof simply means something that is an evidence. And what does evidence also mean? Mm, big words. Evidence is just a thing that we can all see that says something it could be good it might be not so good but of course in this context we can say confidently that proof means something pointed to a thing that is good all right okay interestingly we know we have a core bible text and today's fresh fire but we're going to be going 
deeper into the book of Corinthians to find our memory verse for today. So yes, we know that the book of John chapter 3 verse 2 says he came to Jesus under the clock of darkness to question him. Nicodemus says, teacher, some of us have been talking. You are obviously a teacher who has come from God. The signs you are doing are proof that God is with you. Mm. This just gives us a highlight into our main reading for today. But the memory verse for today is going to be from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 20. And it says, for the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. Hallelujah. Let's say it together. One, two, three, go. Our memory verse is taken from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 20. And it says, for the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. Let's do this together. But in power. Hallelujah. All right. So let's dive into the main content for today as taken from the Fresh Fire devotional by our pastor, Pastor Lefemi Monet. He says, what have you not been able to shake off so far on our study of the book of John? Mm. It's been very interesting, I must say. You know, when I was reading the book of John in particular, you know, I just started imagining how Jesus sacrificed for us. All he had to go through, all the naysaying, all the conniving. And when I say naysaying, people trying to talk bad about him, people trying to trick him, asking him questions, trying to make him, you know, pushed at a corner. But Jesus was wise and he was prepared because he was ever in tune with the Father. And that's one lesson for me that, you know, in spite of what the world may bring, in spite of our experience every day, I must be in tune with the Father. I must do things that will not keep me away from the presence of the Father so that I am able to walk in wisdom like Jesus did all the time while he was on earth. Even when he seemed angry, he didn't sin. He did it all in obedience to the will of the Father. And even when it was time, Jesus, he, he showed us that yes, he, he experienced all that we experience. But he overcame and we too can overcome. Hallelujah. Okay, so it's not that, like, well, Pastor is saying, what have you not been able to shake off? And he's saying it's not that you should be able to shake off any part of the word of God. No, don't choose some and then leave the others. But what he's just trying to say is what sticks out for you, dear influencer? What did you learn and what will you never forget? Of course, you're going to read the book of John over and over again in your walk with God and in your journey through life. But this time around, what did you learn? Can you think about it and write it down? Just think about it for a moment. It doesn't have to be too many lines. Just think about it. I learned this, this, this from the book of John and I will apply it in my life. All right, great job. And if you want to still think more about it, please find time at the end of the session to write one thing that has stuck out for you and you would like to apply from the many stories about Jesus in the book of John. Okay. Now, remember that the purpose of Bible study is for you to get to know the Bible for yourself, the influencer. Mommy is not reading the Bible for you. Daddy cannot read the Bible for you. Every child of God must read the Bible for themselves. Say, it, I must read the Bible for myself. And if you remember, in some teachings ago, we learned that we read the Word of God. We believe the word of God, we confess the word of God, and we receive the word of God. And how are we able to do those things? By personal Bible study. When we read these things for ourselves, not for anybody else. Not to show off to your friend that you can speak some Bible language, no. For yourself, so that you can receive the word of God, and the word of God could grow in your life and, and, and become the truth that you live by. Because the word of God is your truth. Say the word of God is my truth. The word of God is my truth. As the Bible says, so that when you are asked, you can defend your faith because you know why you believe 
what you believe. Yes, their influence or your faith will be tested. You will meet people that want to argue, that even know the Bible from beginning to the end. Even though the Bible is not, is not, is not bearing fruit in their life, but they think it is something to use to argue and to show that they are senior. So when you meet such people, you must be grounded in the word of God. Not using it to show off. But using it to, to dispel all their arguments. You know, there's a part in the Bible that says, casting down every argument and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing to captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. How would you do those things if you don't know what it says for you? Praise God. All right. So let's go into our main focus for today. And it says, We'll be reading from the book of John, chapter 3, verse 1 to 21. Very interesting read. Absolutely amazing read. So, this is a story of a man called Nicodemus who came to Jesus saying, We know God is with you. We know God sent you. And the reason we know it is we have watched you. Nobody can do what you are doing except God is with him. Paraphrase, which means... It's just pastor summarizing what Nicodemus was saying because Nicodemus, a very big man as they say today, came to Jesus saying, ah, God is with you. So pastor is saying here, praying for us all, and let's just close our eyes as we say this very key prayer. I pray in the name of Jesus that the people in your life, the people that you do life with, your colleagues, that's your schoolmates, your workmates, your neighbors, your friends will look at you and say, we know God is with you because nobody can live life like this if God has not empowered him or her in the mighty name of Jesus. We know God is with you because nobody can have this kind of peace, this kind of peace, understanding, clarity, vision of favor, except God is with him or her. And that will be your testimony in Jesus' name. Amen. It was Jesus' testimony, therefore it will be your testimony henceforth and for the rest of your lives in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Do you receive it? If you receive it, say, I receive it. My testimony will always be that God is with me in Jesus' name. Our testimonies will never be, I thought you said God is with you in Jesus' mighty name. It will always be that people will marvel at your life. The way they marveled at the lives of David, Joseph, Daniel, and all the many great men in the Bible. Because God was indeed with them. In Jesus' name, amen. So let's move on. We see here, sometimes we amplify with words what God wants to amplify with deeds. And what are deeds? Deeds are actions, you know. Deeds refer to the doing of something to bring out results. It says we struggle to amplify with words what God wants to amplify with results. Let people see tangibly. When you come out first in school, does that not glorify God? When you come out first in sport, that glorifies God. When you come out shining in, as the best, the best behaved in your class, that glorifies God. Not just say, I'm a child of God. Eh? God is with me. Oh. Eh? Don't, 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 don't try me. Oh. God is with me. No, those things are not necessary. So what we're learning today, that instead of just talking and talking and talking, by our actions, men will know that we are the sons of God and we are manifesting as we should the glory of our Father in heaven. Hallelujah. Okay, so we're learning from pastor's own experience as shared in the Fresh Fire today. He says, according to our pastor, he says, I got saved in my final year at university. When I got saved, one pain and regret I had was that I did not get saved in my first year. Why? There was no way by the grace of God and the covenant I could see in the word of God that I would have been saved in my year one and not make a first class. It is totally impossible whether the lecturer likes me or not. So many times people say, the teacher did not like me. That's why I didn't know. As a child of God, whether they like you or not, the favor of God is always upon you. As long as you do your part and not that you are, you are sleeping when you should be reading. But you do read and you, you focus. Of course, and you are not proud and rude and disrespectful to your lecturer. But you, you stay in, in the place of your covering, which is a place of obedience, a place of humility. And of course, whether they like you or not, you will excel and be first amongst equals in Jesus name. Okay, moving on. As pastor was saying, he says, so while I was regretting and wishing I had known Jesus earlier because I definitely would have made a first class, it dawned on me that I had my entire life ahead of me. Now you know Jesus, let your life be first class. That's what pastor learned and realized. 
when he was wondering, oh, I could have gotten a first class soon. And then he realized that his entire life was still ahead of him. That now he knows Jesus, he must let his life be first class. And that's a key lesson for us. One lesson that we must take out of this teaching for today, amongst the many things that would have dropped in your heart by now, is let it be that in school, if you're a student, people will say, there is something about you. There's something about this child. Hmm. God is with you. Yes. Let people notice. Even people that may not know God. Let them be like, ah, even in school, at home, as a student, you're studying, you're playing sports, whatever you do. Let people see the glory of God in you. When you do the right things, of course, not by trying to cheat or being forceful or being a troublesome person because that's not the way of God's own influencer. God's own influencers are bright children, confident children, yet they're respectful, they're humble, they're friendly, they smile, they show kindness, they show love, but they shine. And people, when you shine, people would always say, mm, there's something about you. God is with you. Amen. So say to yourself, henceforth, people will see the glory of God in my life. Say it again. Henceforth, people will see the glory of God in my life. Amen. So basically, dear influencer, this key lesson points to excellence. Yes, that key word, excellence. And there's one person that exhibited excellence in the Bible, that's Daniel. And even our Lord Jesus, as we see in the way Nicodemus was just looking for him, had to hide. Even though Nicodemus was like a big man in those times, he had to hide so that people wouldn't see him just because he had to just talk to this, this person of excellence, this, this amazing character as found in our Lord Jesus Christ. During Jesus' ministry, he taught in public places, performed many miracles, and proclaimed God's truth with great power and conviction. Many people loved him. Others hated him. Some people recognized his power and the mighty wisdom through which he taught, but could not reconcile his message with their tradition. One such person was Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a leader of the Jews. People respected Nicodemus for his great knowledge of the law, his strict behavior, and his great wisdom. He heard of Jesus and was very interested in his teaching. But he had a lot of unanswered questions. The Pharisees were part of the religious leadership of the day. Many of them found their worth in the strict observance of the law. Most of them did not agree with Jesus, while some, like Nicodemus, could not dismiss Jesus' great power and wisdom. Daily, as Jesus taught in public places, the Pharisees came to listen. They asked Jesus a lot of questions, many trick questions, but could never find any fault with him. Nicodemus wanted to speak with Jesus, but because he was a Pharisee, he had to be careful not to be seen with Jesus in broad daylight. He had to find a special time to meet with him. Late one night, guided by the light of the stars and moon, Nicodemus found his way through the dark streets of the city to the place where Jesus was staying. He had a lot of questions about the law, about Jesus' teaching, and about Jesus himself. Jesus was prepared to explain to Nicodemus everything he needed to know. That night, Nicodemus would leave a changed man. Jesus explained to Nicodemus that he could not inherit God's kingdom if he was not born again. Born again? Nicodemus was confused. What did this mean? It's impossible for a grown man to become a baby and be born again, Nicodemus answered. But Jesus was not talking about becoming a baby. He was talking about a life change so dramatic, so radical, and so new that it would be like being born again. Unless one is born of water and the Spirit, Jesus explained, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Nicodemus began to understand, but he was still confused. How can this be? He asked Jesus, trying to wrap his mind around it. Jesus knew that Nicodemus was having a hard time believing him. 
If you're having a hard time believing earthly things, it will be very hard for you to believe heavenly things. But you must believe. I am the Messiah. I have come to give people eternal life. The truth began to dawn upon Nicodemus. Jesus was the Messiah. Jesus' mission was to give a new life. And so this should remind us of that Bible passage in the book of Proverbs, I think chapter 22, um, verse 29. It says, See a man that is diligent. He will stand before kings and not mere men. And also, the, another version says, See a man that is truly competent. Hallelujah. So what we're learning today, dear influencer, that to show the proof of the glory of our God, not in words, but in deeds, we must be excellent, we must be diligent, we must be skilled, we must do the work. We must do, say, I must do the work. I will not be lazy. I will not be, 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 be sleeping when I should be reading. I will do the work in every aspect of my life, be it in reading my Bible, be it in studying my school book, I will do the work and you will stand before kings, not ordinary people, because you do the work as girls and influencers. In Jesus name, amen. So dear influencer, it is possible. That was Jesus' testimony. If you look at the caliber of the person that came to Jesus, he was not a mean person. He wasn't a mere person. Nic Nicodemus was not an ordinary person. Nicodemus was an example of an extremely powerful and wealthy Jew. He was a member of the Sanhedrin, a member of the religious leaders. He was a Pharisee. And when we hear Pharisee, of course, now in these times, looking back and learning from how not to behave, we see Pharisees as bad people. But in those times, the Pharisees were the ogas, ogakpatakpata, the big men, like we say in the Nigerian parlance. They were the big people, the people of the, that could be likened as not ordinary people. The Pharisees didn't have a testimony of being bad and evil. It's just now as we read the Bible that we see so. So Jesus laid the example to us that we, we, must, we must attract kings in the way we behave, the way we carry ourselves, and the way we act. Praise the Lord, the influencer. So number one key lesson is that just like Jesus people found something very interesting in him. We must always stand out in the way we behave, in the way we act, in the way we speak. You remember what Timothy was told by Apostle Paul? He was told that he must be an example. He should not ever let anybody, first of all, Apostle Paul told him, don't let anyone despise you for your youth. In all things, be it in speech, in conduct and in love, he must be an example to all believers. So dear influencer, one way to exhibit the glory of the Lord, to show that the kingdom of God is not just about words but deeds, is by acting in diligence to ensuring excellence in everything that you do. Three, not being afraid to stand apart from the world because the world wants to make you conform to their patterns. But we are told, even in the book of Romans, that we do not conform to the patterns of this world. But by the renewing of our mind each day, we are transformed so that we can, we can prove that thing which is godly, which is acceptable, and which is perfect. So basically, dear influenza, we see here those three things as key in being able to showcase the glory of God in our lives. But we must also not take for granted that there is a lot of work to be done. Let's not forget that we must stay obedient to God and our godly authorities. Let's remember that we must keep praying, reading our Bibles, so that we know the truth about what God expects of us. Because that's the only way our light can shine when we allow the light from God and his word to come into our hearts and so that we can showcase it to the world and people can see that mm, there's something about this child, there's something about this girl, there's something about this boy. Praise the Lord. And also, 
we must also desire to keep growing. Never ever say, I cannot do it. Desire to keep growing. Even when you make a mistake, it doesn't matter. Keep growing as God helps you and your light will shine in Jesus' name and you will be proof of the glory of God like Jesus was proof even to the great men of his time like Nicodemus was. Hallelujah. All right, so let's go through our memory verse again. Our memory verse is taken from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 20. Remember that the highlighted passage is just a repeat of the reading for today. But we have decided to go further into the book of 1 Corinthians and caption this memory verse for us to remember that to show the proof of God's glory, it's not just in words, it's in power. With power, we can display deeds not just words we can display action we can display results not just words and what are those results to you let's think about it as an influencer as a child growing child what do you think those results will be think about it and when you think about it as you go through this memory verse begin to ask god for the power to succeed in any area that you desire to what could it be in school being you know, a shining star in spots, being able to, 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 to break the, the limits and, 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 and standing out, what could it be? It could even be in showing love. Yes, it's not always easy to show love. But when we show love, we manifest power because sometimes people don't expect it. And there lies, you know, a message of the empowerment of God when we show love, even when people don't expect it. So I just wanted to say that before we move on and repeat the memory verse for today. Our memory verse is taken from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 20. And it says, For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. Hallelujah. And I know you can say this, and I want you to keep thinking about it, keep meditating on it. The kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. Power, hallelujah. All right, so let's just close our eyes and thank God for today's message. Remember, today is Thanksgiving Sunday, and we must be grateful. Gratitude is our way of life. It's not just once in a while. We always count our blessings. Just thank God for today. Say, Father, I thank you for this message. I thank you because you've made me, and you continue to make me a proof of your power. You've made me a shining influencer for you i will continue to shine i thank you father thank you thank you father and of course we'll pray the fresh fire devotional prayer together it says father because of the testimony of christ my life will be a light in jesus name say it like you mean it these are not just empty words they are powerful because every prayer counts say father because of the testimony of christ my life will be a light in jesus name amen and amen all right the influencer till next time i believe you keep staying safe you've heard it so many times we're going to say it again for you just for you to remember keep washing your hands keep using your hand sanitizers stay as physically distant as possible if you can't remember your mask very important i know some of you are taking your vaccines but let's keep staying safe because we have a responsibility we are responsible all right if you want to sneeze you catch it no touching your faces unnecessarily no putting your hands in your nostrils till next time keep staying safe keep basking in the love of god keep showing forth the glory of your father god loves you till next time bye